Welcome back to the scientific writing class. Today we will talk about the abstract title and significance statements and I will start with the abstract. You will remember this IMRAD paper structure hourglass. IMRAD stays, uh, stays for introduction, method, results and discussion and you remember the structure here. And on top of this you have the title, author, abstract keywords and the references. And today or in this lecture we'll be talking about the abstracts and the title and some significant statements. So what is the abstract? So the abstract is basically a mini paper of your, of your paper. So it's a complete but very second summary of the paper. So it's a very dense summary of your paper. It contains brief statements of the purpose, methods, results and conclusions of a study. So you see here that all of the ones that are in this IMRAD structure the methods, results and conclusions are in the abstract. It has to be able to stand alone. It's often included in article databases and is usually free to a large audience. This is very important. I come to this later. The most widely read portions of scientific papers and a well-written abstract can also speed up the peer review process. If you have a nice abstract, the uh, editor and reviewer will like it and will most likely continue this editorial process. So most readers will only look at the title and glance through the abstract. I will show some, some numbers for this later. For the vast majority of readers, the paper does not exist beyond its abstract, meaning if your abstract is not interesting, people will not read it. Go not into the details of your paper. For the referees and the few readers who wish to read beyond the abstract, the abstract sets the tone for the rest of the paper. Meaning if you have a nice abstract, then the reader is already in a well-toned mood. Whereas when my abstract is crappy, then um, as an editor, I, I already get upset more or less. Therefore, authors must ensure that the abstract is properly representative of the entire paper. Yeah, this is um, something that I copied from the paper by Weiss und Neumann. <laughs> this is the reality, how people actually present their abstracts. What it says is that most, in summary, most abstracts are not, in, um, are not well written. This is the summary of this article. So only half of all abstracts begin by providing scientific context. They fail to explicitly define research question. They lack the interpretation. So why is this? I don't know. But again, it's important that you don't do this. You have to spend the time that your abstract is well written and readable. There's two different abstract types in general I would like to mention here. So there's the descriptive abstracts. These are abstracts about the paper. Um, you, can, you can say that this is, for example, a typical sentence. This paper analyzes the case of deforestation in Prairie Frey. We detected the changes. These descriptive abstracts are kind of outdated. They're used mostly by librarians. We work in scientific writing. We work with informative abstracts. So they provide information about the content of the paper. It follows this IMRAD structure. And here's an example how you would recognize actually that's an informative ab abstract because it shows results. So the results show the importance of. Whereas here you refer to somebody else's results. You can do some exercises here if you're interested to, to identify if you're working with an informative or a descriptive ab abstract. But again, we in science writing, we do have informative abstracts. This is some practical information also, what you should include in your, in your abstract. Again, it is your mini paper, so it all has the same structure as your, um, as your paper with objectives, methods, results and conclusions, just much more condensed. So, for example, 30 to 40 words, it's only two to three sentences, why was the study done? State your hypothesis or the main research objective. Usually this is written in the present tense to make your text more dynamic. Then the methods, you can see already from the balance that the methods and the results are the thicker parts where you can use three to five sentences in each. What was done and how was it done, materials measured and write in the past tense. Then the results, again um, the sentences three to five, what was found. This is where you provide the main outcome 
of your study, including some statistical analysis, uh, the results of the statistical analysis, and you write in the present tense. And then finally, the conclusions discussion, what was concluded, summarize your conclusion, why is it important, what are the implications. So again, as with the Emirates study, you, you likely end up with a very broad um, statement and you write in the present tense. Some useful hints again that I collected over the years from the, the writing that I edited. So, as with the paper, do not claim more than your data demonstrate. Whatever is present in the abstract must also be present in the text, in your main body text of the paper. Be honest, avoid abbreviations and references. Especially these abbreviations, this um, is difficult sometimes. I mean, some abbreviations you will... Um, you can just use because they're commonly known, but in most cases abbreviations have always be to be explained. Then write draft abstract before the paper at an early stage or after you finish the paper, whatever suits you better. But don't wait until it's up to the end. The same as I mentioned to you before, start writing at an early, early stage. And you can write the abstract even before you start with your research to write what your research will be about. Rewrite the abstract as the last thing to make sure it matches the final draft paper. This is when you have a review process going on. You probably had to adapt your um, sections in your main paper and do not forget to adapt that abstract to the revised paper. Here are some um, examples of abstracts for scientific papers. So this is from the journal Global Ecology and Biogeography. I'm going to show you a couple of abstracts now from, from published papers and the reason is because they have, um, they are, the journals often have used different structures and um, so they have to adapt to the structure and in this case, for example, the journal asks you to have 300 words structured under headings and you see these headings here, so you have aim, location, time period, major taxa study. So this is a very rigid scheme you have to put your um, information in. This is the journal Global Ecology and Biogeography. Here is a different journal, it's Ecography, and here you see the journal doesn't give you this, um, this specific um, titles of the subsections. So here it's maximal 300 words, and here you would use the um, outline that I have shown you before and basically report your paper in a, in a mini format. Uh, and the third one here. Uh, again, a different journal. This is Journal of Applied Ecology. And here, it's interesting, here it's the numbering is done. And you see that the numbers also refer to, to specific um, guidelines by the, um, by the journal. So one sets the context and need for the work. Point two indicates the approach and method use and so on. So it depends between the journals. Most of the times with the journals that I work with, they do not provide this um, very rigid structure, but you have to write your own abstract with your own, um, with your own structure. Um, <laughs> I'm getting hungry. <laughs> so this is here to show you a nice picture of uh, pancakes and Canadian maple syrup. Why am I showing you this? Because I would like to, to show you um, the process of making maple syrup. Maple syrup takes a long time and you need to collect it at a specific time of the year, then you boil it and boil it and boil it various times until you get this marvelous liquid, the maple syrup. And why do I show you this? Because compare the abstract writing to uh, making maple syrup, you need some 30 to 40 liters of the sap to make a jar of syrup. The essence of your work, consumers want more. So if your abstract is in the shape of this maple syrup, you have good chances that they like it. Yeah, some more information about the abstract. It means to search and scan the scientific literature on relevant topics. For example, if you uh, search for background information on your, on your, on your research, uh, master's research or so, then this abstract will provide you details like other people's abstract. Then it keeps track of most relevant research in the field, convince the reader whether they will pur purchase or download the full article. So this is the importance of the abstract. And again, abstracts are usually available um, online, freely online, where the papers are often restricted. So it's important that this abstract is well written and contains all the information. Yeah, the abstract is um, standalone, self-contained, a description of the research article. 
So the research should be able to understand the key points and results of the research, even if I never see the whole article. Some overall structure is full article thesis. And as I showed you before from the article by Weiss and Norman, most researchers do not follow this. But you can do this now by following this advice that I give you. Again, the abstract is the most important part of your paper. It's free, easy, free and easy to find online, will be read by many more readers than the full paper. And a good abstract makes the reader excited to read your full paper. Here is um, the number of views different sections of a paper receive. So actually the, what people read, the researchers, and you see that the title gives the, the biggest uh, hit here. Most people only read the title, then the abstract, then the paper. Yeah, again, the, the abstract has the same structure as the paper. It has the introduction, the methods, the results and discussion here outlined in, um, in different colors. And I will show you an example now how we dissected an abstract um, following this. This is the abstract. It's about um, yeah, you don't have to read it fully, but it's a nice abstract if you want to stop your video and read it because it's very nice to read. It's a very clear abstract. This is uh, the, the abstract now shown uh, where we have highlighted the different section in colors. As you can see here is red is the introduction, then comes the method section, the results in black and green is the discussion. And just following this structure already uh, you can see that that this is um, easier to read when you know that the structure is um, embedded.